This is Twit. Let's go to the Skype and visit, uh, we're going to go to Baltimore, your old stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. And Nikki Fox is on the line. She's the project scientist for the Parker Solar Probe. She's at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. Hi, Nikki. Welcome. Hi. Great to talk to you. This is crazy. You're going to build this nice, fancy satellite and then crash it into the sun? No, not exactly. Oh. The, the object of the game is not to crash it into the sun. Oh, so you're um, just going to skip by? Well, how do you crash something in yeah. the sun? It's not solid, right? No, there's no solid surface. But if you get close enough to it, it would burn up. Oh. And, and that would be it, really. <laughs> well before it ever got near the, the non-surface, it would burn up. So you're going to go into the corona? How close to the sun are you going to get? So we get to, um, at our closest approach, just under 4 million miles, which I know doesn't sound particularly close when you put it like that, but the Earth and the Sun are 93 million miles apart, so it's about 4% of the distance. Wow. So we're going to be right up in there. Um, you know, if you think of the the uh, Earth to Sun as a big football field, we'd be on the four-yard line knocking on the door for the touchdown. Is it pretty hot there? I imagine there's a lot of solar radiation at least. It's extremely hot, uh, yes. Um, the corona itself is about two million degrees, and that is where we are going to be living and working. What? Won't it yeah. melt? Uh, so, hopefully not, no. Um, <laughs> so even though it's it's two million degrees, that's the, the temperature of the plasma itself, it's, a, it's not very dense, and so the amount of uh, heat that actually comes into our heat shield is only about, I say only, about 1,400 degrees oh. Celsius or 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing! So if you, <laughs> think of it a bit like um, if you put your hand inside the oven, the oven temperature right. you know is like 400 degrees, but right. you can put your hand in there as long as you don't actually touch anything. Right. Um, so, uh, so we're moving very, very fast. Uh, we'll be the fastest man-made object ever. We'll be moving at uh, about 450,000 miles an hour or just under 100 and, about, about 118 miles a second. Wow. How do you get going that fast? Uh, we, we launch on an enormous launch vehicle. Uh, we go up on the Delta IV Heavy, which is currently the largest launch vehicle that NASA has at its disposal. Um, and we also have a third stage. Uh, at the beginning of that little video that you're showing, you actually saw um, the, the fairing, the, the, the bit that rides us into space. It opened yes. and the spacecraft came out and there was actually a third stage motor on it. And it, uh, the, the, it really does accelerate the spacecraft just that extra bit. So we're moving incredibly incredibly fast because we have to get away from the earth's momentum uh we need to be out in this in the the space um to to do our job amazing so i i read that you're doing a lot of this to to protect future astronauts can you talk a little bit about that so Everything that happens, you know, happens kind of in this coronal region. And we've learned an awful lot about the corona by observing it um, and, you know, doing tremendous research. But until you actually go up and visit it, uh, you really can't tell exactly what's going on. So it's a little bit like looking out the window. Um, you can see, you know, that maybe the sun is shining, but you have no idea how hot it actually is until you go outside into the atmosphere and really experience it. Um, so, you know, the, the corona is the birthplace of the solar wind and that's basically the sun's atmosphere that gets superheated in the corona and accelerated so it moves about a million miles an hour uh, away from the sun it bathes all of the planets and it carries with it the sun's magnetic field um, the earth has a magnetic field that we all know and we rely on so that we stay here on earth um, and these two magnetic fields can actually interact and that allows a lot of energy to come into our magnetic environment or our magnetosphere as we call it and that can cause auroras um, it can also cause the van allen radiation belts to pump up where the, you know a lot of spacecraft live and work and of course um there are astronauts um out on the space station we want to keep them very safe so being able to be um predicting what is happening in the corona and what what therefore is going to impact the earth we can kind of predict what the effects of we call it space weather but we're going to uh, we can predict that space weather here on earth do you get a lot of icarus jokes nikki <laughs> flying too uh, close yeah. to the sun <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm guessing yes, the heat shield's not made of wax <laughs> uh no no funny you should mention that um so one of the things that uh, that's amazing about this mission is it really 
is 60 years um, in the making. It was first proposed in 1958, so it actually does predate NASA. Um, it wow. was there was a, a committee that got together and they were asked to provide kind of guidance and advice for the newly forming agencies. So NASA, uh, the National Science Foundation and the uh, the Department of Defense. You know, what do we want to do with space? What are these really amazing things that we want to do? And they had 12 missions that were proposed. And of those 12, the other 11 have all flown. Uh, Solar Probe is the only one that hasn't. And that's purely because we've never had the technology to be able to sort of make our dreams come true. And, ah. and you know, I know you're going to be talking about your um, iPads and everything in a, in a minute, but the sort of the leap that it's taken in technology is 60 years ago, we were using a, a rotary phone that was right. attached to the wall. And, you know, if, if you wanted to go anywhere, you needed a really long cord on it. Now we use an iPhone 7 and it just, you know, tells you everything you want to know on this little tiny piece of technology and that's the kind of leap that we needed to be able to do this mission uh, mostly to design the materials um, so not wax um, but but not <laughs> far off it's carbon um, it's oh. actually a, a carbon carbon composite the heat shield is made from um, but it took years to develop and to really come up with something that was durable that would be able to withstand the incredible heat also the cool if you look at that orbit uh, plot that's showing there it's a very elliptical orbit. So we go incredibly close to the sun on one side and then um, out around Venus on the other side. So, you know, it, it's got big temperature swings. Um, and it also needs to be really, really light uh, because I mentioned we have to be moving incredibly fast. So um, when, you know, if you want to be moving fast, you need to be light so that when that launch vehicle kicks you out of the atmosphere, it's kicking you out at a really fast speed. So you need to be light. And so that's uh, that was the big, biggest technology development for us is our, we call it the giant Frisbee. It's like an eight foot Frisbee um, that sits on the front of the sun. Um, it's so good that the front side of it, as I mentioned, is 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but the instruments on the main body of the spacecraft are actually um, just room temperature. It's kind wow. of a warm day for them. Wow, that's really and remarkable. So I'm going to actually show you. So this is a this is a Lego model that my son built for me, <laughs> um, and it is it is Parker Solar Probe, uh, as so seen cool. by he was then seven. Wow. Um, but uh, here is the the heat shield. So that's always facing the object of the game is to keep the heat shield between us and the sun at all times, um, so that uh, the the instruments on the back here will remain nice and cool, operating just as they would do in a lab here on Earth. So you're launching next year. What's the timeline? How long does it take to get there? And how long will uh, uh, it be there? So yes, we launch our launch window opens um, July 31st, Ooh, 2018. One year. Yep. Uh, yes. Just coming up. It's a little scary when I think of that. But yes, it's coming up. Uh, so um, and uh, it's a seven year mission, just under seven years. Um, so we do 24 orbits of the sun. Uh, we'll get tremendous data. Uh, we do seven Venus flybys. So we do do gravity assists with um, Venus. Uh, a little bit different. Normally, when you hear people say we're doing gravity assists, they actually want to take energy from the planet and speed up. We actually are generously donating energy to Venus and it's actually slowing us down a little bit oh. so we can gradually fall closer and closer into the sun. Um, so we're moving incredibly fast. It's a bit like surfing around the, the sun um, in the same way that you don't fall into the ocean. If you're if you're surfing nice and fast, that's what we'll be doing. We're going to surf the solar wind all the way around. So um, it's, uh, it's an exciting mission. Wow, no kidding. That is amazing. Uh, to Seven-year mission to boldly go where no probe mm -hmm. has gone before. <laughs> to surf the solar wind. <laughs> surf the solar wind, yeah. What, why Parker? Is, a, is there a person named Parker? Why is it called the Parker Solar Probe? There is, actually. Um, it's, it, it's a historic um, event just being called Parker right now because it's the first time NASA has ever named a mission after somebody during their lifetime. Oh. Um, it's extremely rare to, to even have a mission named after you, but to have it done during your lifetime, is, is this is a first off. Um, and he really wrote the seminal work. He was the one who realized there are mysteries in the solar wind, um, and he came up with some ideas for why maybe these mysteries were as they are. Um, and the, the two main mysteries, of course, are the corona. Um, we mentioned that's at 2 million degrees. That's actually hotter than the, the surface, what we call the visible surface, the photosphere of the sun, which is at about... Um, 
uh, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And so just it, it doesn't make sense. You know, you've got a heat source. It should get cooler as you move further away. But for the sun, it actually gets hotter. Um, so the corona is hotter than the surface. And in this region where it suddenly gets to its maximum temperature, it suddenly gets energized. And that's what the solar wind is. And that's how it's able to escape the giant gravity of the sun and move out uh, and bathe all of the planets. And he came up with a very seminal work um, in 1958 that really was the reason that people said, hey, we need to go study this. We need to go up and touch the sun. No kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, a lot of people will get to at least look at the sun in a, in a few weeks uh, with the f total solar eclipse that's going right across the United States. I understand NASA has uh, an eclipse kit and, and something, they, an assignment for people. Yes, that's right. <laughs> tell us, uh, we can, can you tell us about that? Yes, um, so it's actually the first time in nearly 100 years that uh, we've had a total solar eclipse that's going to go coast to coast for us here in the US. So NASA has um, many sites uh, all, all along the path of totality. They have uh, a lot of activities and things that are going on. But um, they're also uh, inviting you to basically take images of the eclipse as you're seeing it, take movies, take images, um, take all kinds of you know, different cool uh, filters that you can put on and then you can upload it to uh, to this Eclipse app and they actually want to use it for scientific uh, research. The, you know, the more, the more views we have, the more exciting it is. So yes, get out, uh, make sure you're wearing your protective eyewear, never look directly at the sun, uh, wear the Eclipse glasses, which you can also get from the NASA Eclipse site. Um, they'll send you an Eclipse kit and uh, you have your glasses and you can go out and uh, pray that it's not cloudy and see a, a unbelievable celestial kind of once in a lifetime sight. Are you, are you going to make that trip, Nikki? You're, I guess you'll have to go south a little bit to go see it. Um, yes, I'm actually going to Nebraska. Oh, um, I, uh, I'm going to be on NASA TV from uh, Homestead National oh. Park. Um, so uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, my first ever solar eclipse. I've never seen one. I've always been the person that gets to stay home and sit in the TV studio. So now it's my time and uh, I'm going to go and uh, see the eclipse. I hope you bring your son as well. Oh, absolutely. Both children, son That's and daughter. Something you'll never, that you never forget. I remember seeing one as a kid and then we went to Australia to, to Cairns to see the last one a few years ago in its totality. And it's really a remarkable and kind of a spooky thing. I know you're a scientist. You understand what's going on. I understood what was going on, but it's a little weird when the lights go out in the middle of the day. Yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Nikki, a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Nic you. Nicola J. Fox is project scientist for the Parker Solar Probe launching next summer, about a year from now, on its way, a seven-year mission to visit the sun and the corona of the That's sun. That's amazing. That is very, very cool. It's hot. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot.